Hi there, Simon from simonwood.com. Uh, I have uh, two Chardonnays from opposite sides of the world next to me. Um, one's from Australia and one's from France, so I'll just dig into them. Uh, the Australian one is, um, the Wine Society does this Australian range uh, made for them by, or acquired for them, so sometimes he's parceling up wines and sometimes he's blending them, uh, by a guy called Mac Forbes, who's based in, based in the Yarra Valley. But um, some of them come from the Yarra Valley. This one comes from the Yarra Valley. But there's stuff from uh, Western Australia, there's stuff from South Australia too. But this is the 2016 Yarra Valley Chardonnay. Once upon a time, Australian Chardonnay would have jumped out of the glass, grabbed you around the throat and, uh, and said, kiss me quick. Uh, here, this is a much more restrained, refined wine. Uh, in fact, it's rather, it, there's, there's not all that much coming out of it, the first few swirls. Uh, it doesn't feel like there's, um, if there's oak there, it's in really, really, um, very, really small amounts. Uh, it feels like there's a briskness and freshness, a slight stony character. Uh, a little, yeah, this, this citrus and maybe a little bit uh, of uh, light melon. Let's have a taste and see what I get. One of those that really scores for texture as much as flavour. There is this juicy, uh, yeah, tinned pear, uh, ripe apple and citrus element to it. There's almost something nutty and cashew-like and ever so slight nut brittle about it. Not sweet, not nut brittle sweetness. Those flavours, that's, yeah, that's like nutty, almost creamy, halva-like uh, character. And um, very interesting. I mean, it's it's. Uh, I'm about to have a wine from the the Maconnet, and it really reminds me of uh, of some wines from the Maconnet. So it's got those uh, subtle stony Burg Burgundian uh, influences, but um, a little bit more fleshy fruit than uh, uh, than, than some of the the, the Chardonnays from um, slightly further north in Burgundy. Speaking of which, let's just set into it. It's, it's pretty nice actually. Um, the second one is um, 2015. Uh, so it's six months older from uh, Louis Latour and it's a Macon Looney uh, Les Genièvres. Let's give it a whirl. Oh, and in terms of alcohol, uh, they're both 13%. Now, this is weird. This smells richer and fatter. If you'd asked a lot of people which of the wines will taste fatter, a Burgundian Chardonnay or an Australian Chardonnay, I think most people would have said the Burgundy. But here, uh, I, I often get this character in, uh, uh, in Macon wines, apple crumble. So there's this cooked apple and a little bit of that character when you when you make crumble and the bit where the crumble meets the fruit is still not fully set and there's a bit that goes, as we say in the north of England, thoddy. There's a slight creamy thoddiness about it. Gentle floral character in there, fresh, juicy. 2015 was a um, it was a really good vintage for red burgundy. Some people are saying it's a bit hot for white burgundy and they don't have the crispness and poise that... Um, um, of a great year. 2014 was probably a bit better for whites. But here, I don't notice any overripeness. I don't know, notice anything that's uh, vulgar and uh, uh, low acid. There's a juicy freshness about it. Uh, I like them both. I think they're both really, really good adverts for Chardonnay. A lot of people are still stuck in that ABC, anything but Chardonnay. But I think if you gave them a glass of uh, either of those two, they might sort of nod and go, OK, maybe time to reappraise this uh, this great variety that I've been maligning for the last few uh, years, months, however long it's been. Anyway, I like them both. See you soon.